What's going on everybody? Welcome to part four of the TensorFlow Object Detection API tutorial series. In this part, what we're going to be doing is building on the last part. Uh, you, at this point, you should have all your images, at least somewhere between 100 and 500 plus images. You can have more than 500 if you wanted. Um, but anyways, you should have all your images. You should have labeled them all by now uh, and you're ready to proceed. So for me, that's an images here and I'm, I've got all these and then go ahead and make a test and a train directory. And then in the test directory, take about 10% of the images along with their matching XML annotation informations um, and copy them into test and then take the other 90% um, and copy them into train. Now, if you download my like pre kind of uploaded version, it should already be done for you. So they should already be in there. It just kind of saves a step. Um, but yeah, it's just copied the images in there. So um, so go ahead and do that. And then once you've done that, uh, we're ready to embark on the journey of creating these TF records. So, because at the end of the day, basically all you need to do to, to, to actually get this done, to train a model, you need the TF records that match your images. Um, then you need to set up the configuration file. Boom, you can train. And it sounds really simple, but there's so, like a bunch of little steps along the way. So <laughs> anyway, um, once you're ready to proceed, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use some uh, helper code basically from um, dat-trans. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, that's probably the easiest way to do it um, is just, I would just look for raccoon object detection. And I suspect that'll come up right. Here it is. So dataset raccoon detector, probably. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. So we really, you could clone this entire directory, uh, but actually we're just inter interested in two scripts from here. Uh, the first one we want is this XML to CSV. Um, also, just because I am taking things from someone else's uh, GitHub, uh, this has been, at least this now is only two days ago, but since I've been making this tutorial, this has, this repository has changed like multiple times. Um, and some of the changes have actually broken uh, the functionality. So um, I'll buy it briefly. I think he fixed he fixed because uh, one of them I think was the for the t actual generate TF record. Um, it broke for Python three when he added support for Python two. So anyway, but I'm pretty sure it works now. So anyway, but if you if for whatever reason things aren't working in the text based version again, there should be a link in the description. If I forget to put the link there, someone just remind me um, to the exact commit that I'm using for this tutorial series. So if something doesn't work right, you can go to that exact commit and it will still at least work, but try to use the updated versions. For example, the most recent update was, uh, to fix the multi box problem. So that's, I'm pretty sure for, if you had multiple boxes, um, of labels, I'm pretty certain that initially he only handled for if, if there, there would just be one box. So he didn't actually allow for multiple boxes. So anyway, obviously it's a useful improvement. So um, try to use the latest versions if you can. Um, so anyways, uh, yes, so XML to CSV, that's the one that we're gonna use for now. So I would just go to raw and we'll just uh, copy that. And for now, I think it will probably a good idea to, to, to make a new directory. And we're gonna call this object-detection. Um, and then I'm just gonna drag images into object detection. Cool. And I'm gonna go and create a new document and we're just gonna call this the same thing, XML underscore to CSV.py. And open with, and we'll use Atom since it's here. And go ahead and uncheck that box. No, I don't wanna be helpful. And paste. Okay. Let me make this uh, big. Hopefully that's pretty challenging to see on video, but it is soft on the eyes. I mean, a lot of people make fun of me for using idle because it's like white and black. I mean, for some, some, some reason I like it because it's just like so, so clear, but this does, it is soft, that's for sure. So uh, within the XML to CSV, basically there's a couple of things we want to change. Um, actually, there's really only one thing. For some reason, I think before there was something changing here, but now it would just be in this main loop here. Let me make sure it's on screen. Yeah. Um, add some space here so we can see it. So what we're going to want to do is um, put a for loop here. So um, so I would say for directory in um, train test. Um, it depends, I'm not sure why this isn't here. Um, <laughs> there's a couple of changes that I made to this uh, these, this code that I'm just, 
I should probably do a pull request or something, or at least just ask, like, why? Why not? Why not just set it up like this? I just, I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, so it's going to iterate through the train and test to create those separate CSVs, and then from these CSVs, we create the TF records. So, or what would be really nice is in this main loop, that way we didn't have to copy all the images, just have, like, a train test split that happens in the main function. That would be wonderful. We should, should make those changes. Um, somebody want to make those changes, submit them to pull requests, great. Uh, anyway, and then it's not raccoon labels, at least for me. It's going to be, um, well, actually, it would either be train or test labels. So what we'll go ahead and do is just do some string formatting here. Um, and then dot format directory. Also, we want to store them into data slash. And again, this is something that um, even he does in his like write-up. So just um, since it was actually fairly helpful to me, it didn't fully give me everything I, ne I needed because I guess I'm an idiot. Um, but he does also have like a medium write-up for training object detectors with TensorFlow's object uh, API. Um, but even in his code, I'm pretty sure he slows or throws in this stuff into the data directory. So anyway. Um, that's, these are like the kinds of things I've just found confusing as I was like going through this, <laughs> like trying to put everything where it needs to be. Uh, anyway, uh, I think that's the only changes that we need to make. Let's see, images. No, get current working directory. We don't use annotations, we're using images. And then it would be images slash trainer test. So again, format um, directory. Okay, we'll find out pretty quickly if, if this is if correct or not. So <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so we'll save that and I'm just gonna minimize it for now because we no doubt probably messed up somewhere or I did anyway. Uh, change directory into home, see desktop object, uh, dude, <laughs> object detection. Um, and that might be kind of hard to see. Uh, zoom in. Control plus plus. So, a lot of times that doesn't work. Oh, it's working. Very nice. Um, okay. So now I'm going to run um, Python 3 object, or no, sorry, uh, XML to CSV.py. Oh, we don't have a data directory yet. So let's go ahead and create the data directory. Uh, new folder, data. Also, um, before I forget, I'm just going to create the directory for training because we're also going to need a training directory. Um, let's try that again. Cool. So now to just check, we're going to hop into the data directory. Sure enough, test labels, train labels.csv, both are done. Uh, I don't want to use LibreOffice. Come on, just open up in anything, <laughs> anything else. Uh, here we go. That'll be good enough. So it should look something like this. Now my, my test labels is pretty short. It's only like 12. Um, by the way, I think I have like 150 total samples and then 12 of them are the test and then the rest I use to train because I, I don't really like you kind of want to fit test is just there to, just to tell you in the training steps, but it's almost like a waste otherwise um, because the model's trying to fit to the training data anyway. So and I already came into this project knowing that this pipeline works. So why would I waste too many images on the testing steps? Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, okay, so we've converted them uh, to CSV, and um, now what we want to go ahead and do is um, grab that TF record uh, script. So heading back to the GitHub, back page, back again, uh, generate TF record, grab that, go to raw. And again, just copy object detection, uh, new document, uh, generate tf record.py. And paste. Now in this one, um, I think the only change we need to make will be up here. So. Um, we're just going to change raccoon to be whatever your label was. So whatever label you chose when you were labeling it and then label image, um, put that in. For me, that's mac and cheese. 
Um, but for you, that might be other things. Now, if you had multiple objects, you might have many if statements, right? So your first one would be one. Your second one would, like, let's say you did mac and cheese and hot dogs. Hot dogs would return two and, and so on. You could go very far. Now, it looks like, judging by this to-do um, statement here, that he's probably going to replace it with the label map. My guess is that's, like, a, the label map that you're going to write, well, we're going to write later. Uh, but I really don't know. But eventually, this function might totally change. So um, just be on the lookout for that. If this has changed, um, you can either use your intuition to kind of figure it out, or you can, like I said before, go to the exact commit that I'm using here. I just don't want to copy his code and put it up uh, on my GitHub. So I'm not going to do that. Or on Python program in it. So anyways, um, I think that's the only thing we want to do. Otherwise, the rest of his code is good enough. Also, just for the record, um, I don't know about the XML to CSV. I think it. I think it does have a conversion for that too. But um, for sure, generating TF records is code that is on the official uh, TensorFlow Object Detection API uh, page. It's just I figured it out using this guy's code uh, and using his write-up. So I just figured I'd, I'd I'd use it for this tutorial too. There's no, really no reason for me not to. Um, so other than that, I think that's all we need to do. The only difference is, of course, that this is going to be using object detection dot utils and all that. So, um, so now I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and install that. So if you've been following along this whole time, chances are you've already got that installed, like the object detection stuff and all that. Um, but I wanted to make sure I was on a completely fresh, uh, install. Uh, so I didn't have anything else already on here. So I've I didn't skip any steps because there's so many steps to this process. I wanted to be 100% certain that anybody following along could really follow along um, and not have missing stuff. All right, so I've got it uh, installed up to the point of, of all the stuff that we did basically in part one of this series. Uh, now there's one more thing we need to add that everybody's going to need to do, um, and that is in actually install object detection uh, to to our machine basically. So uh, from, well really the models entirely. Anyway, from desktop slash models, what we're gonna wanna do is actually just install this. So we're gonna do a, um, a sudo python3 setup.py install. And again, that's from, from that models directory, the, the cloned GitHub. And so you should be all set now. So, um, so once we've done that, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is, and, and once you've done that too, you won't have to take the object, or you shouldn't anyways, have to take object detection, slap it into that directory. It should just be here. So eventually we are going to slap it in anyways, but um, this makes uh, life a little easier. You don't have to do the system path change nonsense. Anyway, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and try to generate that TF record. So I am going to come back over to, oh, these are both in desktop models. Okay, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna close out of this one then. Um, and change directory back and then into object object dash detection, which might be kind of confusing at this point. Um, but object dash deten detection is our directory, the one we've been working on. Anyway, um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, Python 3, um, actually, let's just go into that generate TF record because I'm pretty sure he's got a sample of what we want to write. Right. So we need to do this twice, once for the train labels and once for the test labels. So let me, let me type three here. And then um, we're going to make the output. Let's see, the input should be data slash train labels. I'm pretty sure we already... Um, that's the, the nomenclature basically that we used. And then the output, we're going to throw it automatically into data slash that. Again, I'm not sure why this isn't the case already, because unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure even in his code, um, that's where it needs to wind up eventually. So, uh, so we're going to copy that and come back over here, um, and do right click, paste. So just make sure train labels to train.record. Good, we'll run that. Done. And then now we're just gonna take train and call it test. And then don't forget to do this one over here as well. Test. 
Okay, now we should have our records. Let's go ahead and confirm, make sure that they're actually there. So data slash, um, there's your test record, train record. Okay, so we have the TF record file. So um, this step was just kind of confusing, but basically what we had to do is, is convert from anything that, that generates data and like, I, I think we just call it the Pascal VOC data structure basically. And once you take those Pascal VOC files, you've got to convert them to TF record files. That's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, basically this whole process was the steps that are required to convert from the stuff that we made with label image to TF records where we can actually use them with the object detection um, API. So that's it for this uh, tutorial. In the next tutorial, um, basically what we need to do to train a model is have the TF records we need and a configuration file basically and a model and all that to start with. Um, so in the next tutorial, what we're gonna do is set up that configuration file, get a pre-trained model and we can actually um, start training at that point. Um, and then see, see if we can detect the macaroni or not. So anyways, uh, that's it for now. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial.